Welcome to E-Day. I'm glad you could join us. My name is Sean Eckert, and I'm a mechanical engineer with Lockheed Martin, building airplanes and helicopters. And today, I'm gonna show you how to design one of these. It's a tower made out of spaghetti, marshmallows, and tape. And at the end of the design, you're gonna build it to withstand the weight of one of these very delicious marshmallows. Just like that. This bag was full when I first started this. I've just been eating them. And at the end of it, I'm gonna show you how this compares to an aircraft structure. So let's get to it. All right, welcome to Snip Snap Spaghetti. The purpose of this um, project is gonna be to teach the importance of a design phase the first step in anything we build is always going to be the design phase and this allows everything to be repeatable so when you build a prototype you can always go back and build it again and then this is also the purpose is to show the forces applied to the building um, and then also aircraft structure and then the other purpose is to teach students to understand how different structures and shapes are stronger than others and they can support more weight and be less uh, prone to twisting and other forces. And then, at the end of this, we're going to be able to compare a simple spaghetti structure to an aircraft structure, similar to the one that I build. So your parts list is going to be your 20 pieces of spaghetti, 20 small marshmallows, one large marshmallow, one foot of tape, and then a paper and a pencil. So your rules for this is going to be the spaghetti, small marshmallows, and tape can be modified in any way, shape, or form. Um, leave that up to your imagination. That's why this is a design project. So I'm going to test you on your design skills. Now the large marshmallow, that is the object that you're trying to support. So it cannot be modified in any way, shape, or form. Now the measurement from the base of the tower to the top of the large marshmallow is what's going to be accounted for. Um, it's not going to be from halfway, midpoint, wherever. It's wherever that big marshmallow is, the top uh, surface of that. That's where the highest point of your tower is going to be. So just make sure you don't stab it too far into your tower. Now, really test yourself. Um, time yourself. Let's do five minutes to design and then 25 minutes to build the structure, right? In the real world, you're always going to have time limits. So let's, let's go ahead and test that. All right, so a little history on the tallest buildings in the world. So in the late 1800s, um, around 1885, the first steel frame skyscraper was built. It was the Home Insurance Building, um, built in Chicago, Illinois and it had a max height of 138 feet and that was uh, 10 floors now when we fast forward we built the Empire State Building in 1930 in Manhattan uh, New York City this was the tallest building for almost 40 years and it was 102 floors and a max height of 1,250 feet. So you can see the advancements in um, building processes and material types you, I mean, they went up roughly a thousand feet. And so your next building is the tallest building in the world. You may already recognize it. It's the Burj Khalifa. It was built in Dubai, the United Arab Emirates. It's the tallest building in the world. Built in 2004, it has a max height of 2,722 feet. That is 160 stories. That is substantially bigger than the home insurance building built in 1885 but that was only a span if you look at it of roughly 120 years that's not that long of a time and then we built a structure that is roughly 16 times taller that is huge so the design phase um, is going to really test you on how you think about the, the structure of the building. So this is going to help you out a little bit. 
Um, this is just the basic structure of a building. You'll see at the pictures that they use a lot of cross members. Um, there's a lot of bracings that are used, and this is to prevent twisting and compression and tension. And, and you'll learn about that here in a little bit. Um, but I just want to point out that you really want to look into adding some cross bracings because when you just add a structure that's just going straight up, it's going to be subjected to twisting. And it's going to make the build a whole lot harder. This right here is a building that's under construction. You can see the vertical beams, horizontal beams, and the cross membrane structures. So all this is going to have forces applied to it. And there are five forces. So the first one is going to be bending. And then the next one is going to be tension. And then right after that is compression. And then shear and torsion. Now I also want to talk about two definitions. One being rigidity, which is the material's resistance to bending. And the next is strength, which is the resistance to breaking. So let's discuss these forces in a little bit more detail. So let's look into the five forces applied to a spaghetti noodle. So remember the definition rigid. So a spaghetti noodle is pretty rigid. It doesn't want to bend. Now, when I apply a bending force to it, it will bend pretty easily. So let's look at tension. So this is the force that's pulling. It pulls. Oh, there you go. I was able to pull it. I didn't think I was. So this is the force that breaks something when it is pulled apart. Now, let's look at compression. Now, this is the force that pushes it together. I don't think I'm gonna break out, there you go. So I was able to break it by applying a compression force to it. Now shear is the force pulling down this way and up this way. So this actually sheared pretty easily. I actually sheared probably one, yep. So it's very brittle material and it shears very easily. So the next force we're going to look at is torsion. And so I'm going to use a little drill gun here. So torsion is applying a torque to the noodle. So a little tighter. There we go. So it's just spinning in my hand. But this is what torsion is. It's when you apply a bit of torque to material. There you go. So I was actually able to shear it by just applying a bit of torque to it. Now, let's also look at two different shapes. So most people is going to start their tower with a square structure. And though it looks like a lot of buildings are made like this way. Look at that. It's not as resistance to bending. I can actually twist it this way and this way. So this is actually going to make it very difficult to build a tower because it's going to tend to do that while you're trying to hold it with one hand and building supports. Let's compare that to a triangular shape. Now if I push it, it doesn't do anything. If I try to bend it, it's a little bit more resistant. I can actually hold it in one hand and shake it. It doesn't do anything. Now, if I do, do the same with the square structure, it starts to sag right there in the middle. And that's because it's not as resistant. It has too many points of that allow for movement. There's one less point in a triangle and actually distributes the weight a little bit better. So, your design phase. Let's time yourself. Do it for five minutes. Um, and remember, incorporate a lot of cross bracings in your design. And remember, a triangular shape is going to distribute the weight a little bit better than a square structure, um, as discussed previously. So just keep that in mind when you're building. All right. So I have all my materials here. Got my 20 small marshmallows, one big one, 20 pieces of spaghetti and my foot long pieces of tape that I cut in one inch increments. I got my blueprint right there. So let's get to building. 
All right, let's start with the base. Remember, as I said, that the base is gonna be a snip in half spaghetti noodle, just like that. What we're gonna do stick it in and just like that I have a base wow there we go now next step I'm gonna go ahead and make the second base it's gonna make it a little bit easier building it I've done a, a few of these and I kind of came up with some tricks and tips and tricks on how to do this. There we go. So, there's my two bases. Now what we're gonna do is do them sideways because it's way easier to utilize gravity, which is pulling everything down. And we'll just build it sideways. And then we'll stand it up. So that guy falls. There we go. There is our structure. Now you'll see that it's trying to bend this way and that way. But well now we need some supports. So, got one there, and here, you need to keep everything even, and one over here, and so right off the bat I'm already changing my design, and this is because of structural reasons, because look, I can't build, I can't keep building going up if it's gonna twist like that. So what I'm gonna have to do is add supports or cross bracings. Like that. And boom. Now you got a standing structure that is mostly even. It stands on its own. So I actually had to add three braces for three supports to keep it from twisting and wanting to fall down. So those are the forces I was talking about, which is which is why it makes it easier when you're doing it sideways than trying to build it upright. So the next one, well, let's count how many we have here. So because I already used three, so. That was pretty much a story right there. So I could do a second story and a bracing. And that leaves me with again to make a very sharp point. Yeah. Let's let's uh let's keep it going. So like I said, it's much easier building it sideways than it is um, right side up. You can kind of see there it's already twisted, which is, which is kind of cool how it twisted itself into, into this form. So let's kind of twist it back All right there. So it's nice and straight. Here we go. That's what the culprit was. It was him. He's pulling everything up. We just need to stab him down here a little bit more. Keep him there. Just like that. There we go. So, let's continue on. I'm going to go ahead and add my marshmallows to the ends. This is another trick I learned. We're gonna go ahead and split these right now, shear them. So that's the shearing force right there. Those are basically even. Do another one right here. That's basically even. 
bind these together. Oops. Don't do that. That's how you break it. And you don't want to hear oops at a job site. That's that's a that's when you don't want to live in that place. Forearms would definitely come in handy. Once again, we're going to do our bracing again. And this is what it tends to do, it tends to twist on you a lot. Evaluate. Let's make sure that it's nice and straight. You want all the forces to go down. You don't want any of this twisting motions. There we go. Mostly going down. Now, now's the perfect time to start using your tape. This is going to make this much safer to work on. that joint up. Let's tape some of these other ones up. Get them to building a little bit higher. is the tricky part right here. Not wanting to use too much tape, but use just enough that it supports that structure. You don't want this thing falling down when you're pretty much done building it. You definitely do not want that. There we go. It's mostly, that's pretty solid. I don't want to take these top pieces just yet because this is where we're going to build the point. Here we go. Oh, let's start 
these cross. So this tape, in this case, is actually acting like cross joints. So your bracings here at the end. Here on this guy because he wants to be a little stubborn. We'll get more on this guy over here. And then I'm going to cut this tape in half, put some right here on this guy. And I think I'm going to do I think I'm going to leave this tape just in case anything wonky or weird happens. All right. So, let's get to installing this guy. The piece of resistance. Yeah. That is why I wanted to save this little bit of tape right here hold all this together. And boom, there we go. Got a standing structure. Now, Let's measure how tall that is. Let me get Let's use our handy dandy measuring device. And that right there is 28 and 5 eighths. Before it fell, it was 28 and 5 eighths. That's why I saved a bunch of marshmallows, right? Because you definitely want to have enough marshmallow at the top. That right there is the sweet goodness right there. So let's measure again. That is 28 and three quarters. On the base, that's 28 and three quarters. Now let's compare it to this one that I made earlier today. And get another big marshmallow. Here we go. And what you'll notice is that when I put this marshmallow on this one, because I kind of wanted to stretch this guy out as much as I could, notice that height difference right there. So look how much more I was able to do using the triangle method, whereas opposed to the square method. So let's measure this guy one more time. Yep, and that was 27. And since I stabbed it in a little bit more, it's about 27 inches. So there's your structures. Square structure, triangular structure. Look how much higher I could build this. The peak to this one ended right here. The peak to this one ends right here. I sort of wanted to really extend this guy up to see how high I could really get it. So I put two pieces of noodles together to bring it up. But look how that's not very stable right here. But this one on the other hand is extremely stable. And I was able to save uh, a few marshmallows, and that was by design. We knew that from the beginning. But if you notice, I did change from the blueprint. And this one, I also changed when I was building it. So that's what it was supposed to look like. It's supposed to have two tiers. It only has one tier. Our design was supposed to have three tiers. It only has two tiers and that's because we wanted to really stabilize it and add a bunch of cross bracings and make sure that it wasn't just going to topple over so well there you go i hope you guys learned something from this um triangular shapes hold a lot more weight and are a lot more stable than squares and that's because they don't move around as much so let's continue let's compare these two structures to how aircrafts are built so we'll talk about that in more detail here in a little bit. 
So now let's talk about how a simple spaghetti structure compares to an elaborate aircraft structure. Like though you would think that there'd be a lot of differences between a airframe that flies and a structure that stands still for its entire life. So what are the similarities between an airframe and a spaghetti structure? So look at the pictures here and you may notice that there's some resemblance to a structure in one and two. So these are old World War I era aircraft fuselages where they used a lot of um, uh, members that would tie together with tension cords and then the outer structure of the aircraft was actually made out of a fabric. So the entire integrity of the aircraft was just a frame. Now fast forward over the years through um, technology advancements, we were able to update the design of the aircraft, make it lighter, make it stronger, make it more aerodynamic and you'll see that one through four there is a significant change so one used fabric and tension cores two got away from that and used an external aluminum structure um, a skin to help in the in the strength of the aircraft number three went to an entire cylindrical shape and to make it way more aerodynamic and number four started using um, stringers, which we'll talk about later, but this added a tremendous amount of strength to the aircraft while still keeping it super light. So you'll see here, this is the most modern day aircraft fuselage. So, how spaghetti structures really compare to an aircraft structure? Well, here it almost looks like a tower, right? You have laundrons and diagonal members and vertical members. And if you were to take this and flip it vertically, it would look almost exactly like a tower that you're going to build here, or you've already built, actually. And so the one on the right is a little bit more advanced. So the one on the left is more um, for like simple aircraft, smaller type aircraft, your Cessna 172s, your Super Cubs, um, something that's going to be extremely light, um, very small, very low powered. And then the aircraft structure on your right is going to be for larger aircraft such as uh, C-130s, C-17s, um, big cargo planes, even Boeing type aircraft. Um, it's anything that's going to be uh, substantially large. And so it's going to have uh, bulkheads, stringers, a laundron, and the skin. And so your laundron is going to be like your vertical supports. And then your bulkhead, you can think of it as a base. And then your stringers are pretty much your cross bracings that keep the aircraft structurally sound. And then your skin is just going to tie everything together, just like the outer wall on a uh, building. And so here is a aircraft that I work on, um, very similar to one, and what you're going to see here is that the same forces that are applied on a building also apply to an aircraft. So in this case, there is wind that acts as drag on the aircraft, and then thrust, which is created by the engines um, spilling the propellers and forcing the aircraft to go forward. Now you're also going to have weight because everything has gravity, and then lift. Um, and that's because the wings are airfoils that lift the entire aircraft. So you're going to see here that lift and weight actually creates tension on the aircraft. And then drag and thrust creates compression. So here's a little picture of an aircraft with the skin made invisible. So you can see the internal structure, how it's it's got these supporting bulkheads and laundrons and everything, and it almost looks if you were to take the wings off, it would look like a structure if it was put vertically. And so this is just to show you how it visually looks very similar. Although different materials are used in airplanes as compared to buildings, buildings mostly use steel and high strength iron and, and aircraft mostly tend to stay to um, aluminum and fiberglass, anything that's like extremely light, because obviously it has to fly, right? And so the lessons learned for this, what did we learn? Let's see, um, the design phase is a brainstorming session, and not all designs can be made in real life, as we just learned and I showed you how I actually changed my design, and how we also learned that tower structures rely on a lot of bracing, and 
simple shapes to actually support weight, right? Triangular shapes, as we found out, are a little bit stronger than squares. And then we also learned that aircraft are very similar to tower structures. They have laundrons and stringers that act like bracings, and then they have bulkheads that are like bases to a building. And then we also learned that forces that apply to a building are very similar to the same forces that apply to an aircraft, right? Gravity creates weight, wind creates drag. Result, the resulting forces on an aircraft and a building alike are compression and tension, in which all of our designs are tend to, to minimize and counteract. We're trying to create a very strong structure that will be safe for people to live in and also safe for people to fly in. So just remember that next time you fly in an airplane or you stay at a hotel or even at your house. So I hope you learned a little something from this and I hope to see you again next year. At Lockheed Martin, we're on a mission. Your mission. When millions of people are counting on you, you can count on us. To build the impossible to invent the inconceivable and solve every problem with speed and reliability. Every mission is an expedition of the greatest importance, both to you and to us.